Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this video, we're going to have some extra math fun because we get to deal with fractions. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I don't even know what the problem is because I don't see the numbers. Well, that's for you to figure out. Of course, I'm going to fully explain this problem, but if you understand what's going on here and can solve this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one second. Then we're going to fully uh, walk through this problem. It's not that difficult, but uh, we are dealing with fractions. So if you're a little bit shaky on fractions, stick around and we'll go through some basics. Um, also, if you need uh, math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video is exciting in some small way, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the problem. Obviously, uh, these things are representing numbers, right? We have some operations here, so I don't want to give you too many hints, but uh, what did you come up with? Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The answer is the following, okay? Three halves, or you could write this as a uh, mixed number fraction. So either one of these is correct. So if you didn't get these right, no big deal. We're, I'm going to obviously uh, go through this, but uh, you probably, one or two things um, may be going on. One, you may be confused about some uh, fraction operations, or two, you just don't understand the nature of this problem. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and clarify this, but if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are an expert in fractions. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to this problem. And the idea here is to um, look at what's going on. Obviously we have graphical representations. This is a um, effectively a model, right? And these are, you know, we're looking at things if you recall learning about fractions way back when you're in, I don't know, second, third grade, you were kind of like, you know, faced with little graphical models like this and you had to figure out, okay, what's going on here? Now, let's just think about what a fraction is, okay? Well, a fraction more or less is a part, okay, out of a whole, right? So like here, for example, we have, let's say, a pizza and it's uh, sliced up in four slices right here, right? So this yellow shaded um, uh, part of this pizza represents one. Well, well, represents what? Well, one slice out of four total. Okay, so this is one out of four. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I was looking at the white sectors, and maybe you could say this is like three out of four, but you know, I think that's kind of less intuitive. This type of problem, by the way, um, is uh, fairly common, you know, in more basic mathematics. So hopefully you understood what to do. But let's go ahead and um, look at each one of these figures and uh, actually assign an actual fraction to it. So here, this would be one out of four. So this represents the fraction one fourth. And here, what do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, four uh, uh, shaded yellow boxes out of how many? Well, there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four times four is 16. So we have four out of 16 boxes shaded. All right, so that would represent the fraction 4 sixteenths. And then here we have what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 2 is 10 total boxes, and 2 are shaded. So that's 2 out of 10, right, or 2 tenths. So effectively, this is the problem. We have 1 fourth plus 4 sixteenths divided by 2 tenths. So if you figure this part out, that's actually uh, very good. And if you didn't get the answer right, but you actually had the correct fractions, well, that could be a bit alarming as it uh, tells me that you need to brush up on your fraction skills. By the way, if you need help with basic math, uh, definitely check out my Math Foundations course. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below. It's just a, a, a three-chapter mini course. Uh, it's kind of like a boot camp for basic math review, okay, to include fractions decimals, all that kind of good stuff that you learned way back in elementary and middle school and probably forgot. But let's go ahead and continue on with the problem. So here, uh, the actual problem is going to be 1 fourth plus 4 sixteenths divided by 2 tenths, right? So here we have the operation, uh, the addition operation, and here is division. So effectively, this is the problem. 1 fourth plus 4 sixteenths divided by 2 tenths. 
Now, when you look at a uh, fraction problem or any problem in mathematics, before you start doing anything, you want to get the problem in its simplest format. All right, so is this current problem in its simplest format? Well, no, okay, don't even start anything until you simplify each one of these fractions. So let's kind of go through this one by one. So one fourth is what? Well, that is fully reduced or simplified, so we'll keep that one fourth plus four sixteenths, however, we can definitely reduce that fraction uh, to one fourth. And I'll quickly review how to reduce a fraction here in a second or simplify it. And then we have divided by two tenths and two tenths we can simplify to one fifth. So you don't want to just start a problem, you know, without looking at each one, each uh, uh, the fractions or numbers or even let's say uh, in algebra, algebraic expressions. You want to simplify everything first. That's why in mathematics uh, you'll see uh, this uh, a problem often is simplify. Okay, simplify. Here, I'm just my scribble scratch here. Simplify the following. Simplify this. Simplify that because. You know, it just makes your life much, much easier. You want to make things as simple as possible and then do the work. Okay, so this is what we're facing right here. We have one fourth plus one fourth divided by one fifth. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next step. Well, the next step is we have to make a decision whether we're going to do addition first, whether we're going to start the problem this way, one fourth plus one fourth, and then divide by one fifth, or we're going to go one-fourth divided by um, one-fifth, and then we'll add in that one-fourth, right? So this is a huge area of confusion for a lot of students. This is what we call the order of operations. Now, what is a mathematical operation? Well, effectively, it's an adding, subtracting, um, division, multiplication, uh, powers. This is a whole topic in and of itself. So this little saying right here, PEMDAS, and there's a little phrase that goes with it, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, is kind of like our set of directions, okay, our guidance on um, what to do first. Okay, now I'm not going to turn this into a full order of operations uh, video, uh, but if you don't understand this, that's uh, what I would call a math 911 emergency. Okay, this is critical, but effectively, the P is uh, parentheses. Do we see any parentheses here? No. Okay. In other words, we don't see anything like this. So uh, we can kind of ignore that. E stands for exponents or powers. Do we see anything like two to the third power? Nope. Now the M and D is, we, we're going to take that as one group. Now we're looking for multiplication and division. Do we see any multiplication and division? Yes, right there. Okay. So this is what we're going to do first. And after we handle all multiplication and division, from left to right, we'll go into addition and subtraction. So um, if you had these um, fractions correct, but you actually did this right here, that tells me you need to review the order of operations. No big deal. Matter of fact, if you made these errors, I'm glad that you did because, you know, this uh, video is going to give you an opportunity to kind of, you know, um, clarify, you know, uh, you know, confusion that you may have, right? That's the, you know, when you do math, let me just say this real fast. When you're doing math and you get the wrong answer, you have to write out your steps because you could just, uh, the difference between you getting the wrong answer and right answer could be just this one little area of confusion. Okay. That's why it's so critical to write out each step and pay attention. All right. So this is the problem that we're going to do. Of course, we're going to do the division first because of PEMDAS. So let's go ahead and take the next step. All right, so we got one fourth plus one fourth divided by one fifth. We gotta figure this out right here. So let's go and focus on one fourth divided by one fifth. What is this equal to? Well, of course, you need to know something about fraction operations. So one fourth divided by one fifth, we don't really divide fractions per se. What we do is change fraction problems into multiplication. And the way we do that is we look at the fraction uh, to the right of the division uh, sign. Okay, so here's the division symbol, and the fraction to the right of it is one fifth. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip that fraction upside down. Okay, when you flip one fifth upside down, you get five over one. That's called the reciprocal. You don't need to remember that, but just know that the fraction to the right of the division symbol is going to flip upside down, and then that division symbol is going to become multiplication. So the equivalent problem, okay, let me kind of erase all this right here now. 
uh, is the following. Okay, one fourth divided by one fifth is equal to one fourth times five over one. So now we're going to go ahead and do this uh, problem right here, which of course is going to be the answer to this. All right, so one fourth divided by five over one, what is that equal to? Well, this is super simple. When we're multiplying fractions, all we need to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So one times five is, of course, five. And four times one, of course, is four. All right, so uh, what we have now is five over four. All right, so now where are we at? Well, we got to figure out, uh, you know, keep track of what we're doing here. So we just figured out one fourth divided by one fifth, and that is five over four. So now our problem is down to one fourth plus five over four. Okay, so now we're moving from uh, division to addition of fractions. And this is where a lot of um, students kind of panic. You know, they're like, oh, I got to divide fractions. I don't want to do that. Now, why are they saying that? Because they're, uh, you know, a lot of people associate uh, nightmares with fractions because they got to figure out what the LCD is, the lowest common denominator. Well, this particular problem, uh, we don't have to deal with this. All right. And why? Well, because we can add fractions if the fractions, we can actually add or subtract fractions if they have the same denominator. Okay, so here in uh, this particular case, we have the same denominator, four and four. So we don't have to deal with finding the lowest common denominator. Of course, you're gonna need to know how to do that. So when you have fractions that have the same denominator, you wanna add them up. All we're gonna do is keep that one denominator, which of course is four, and then add the respective numerators, the top numbers. So that's gonna be one plus five over four, so one plus five is six over four, and here is basically the final answer. Now, if you got this answer, I would still give you a nice happy face. However, you are not done, okay, because we always want to simplify your results, and this is an example of uh, simplifying or reducing a fraction. So six over four, what we want to do is look at the factors of a, uh, six and four, okay, i.e., uh, numbers that when we multiply them together, we get back to this number. So six is the same thing as two times three, and four is the same thing as two times two. What we're trying to do is identify common factors. Okay, so you can see here, we have a two up here and a two down here. Although we have two twos down in the uh, denominator, you can already cross cancel uh, one uh, factor for one factor. Okay, so what we're trying to do is cross cancel like factors. In other words, we have a two here, a two here, these can go away. And we're left with what? Well, we're left with the answer, three halves. Okay, so that is the answer. And I'm going to suggest to you that you leave your answer as what we call an improper fraction, where the uh, numerator is larger than the denominator. Okay, so something like one-fourth is a proper fraction because the denominator is larger than the numerator. But if you chose to uh, change uh, this into a mixed number fraction, you can do that by dividing three uh, uh, by two. Okay, so you just do old school division here. So you can see this work and we get one and one half. Now, of course, I'm gonna fully explain all this in my uh, math courses, but uh, here's one little tip, okay? Unless your teacher ask, um, uh, ask you or tells you, hey, write your final answer as a mixed number fraction, don't um, just volunteer. Just make sure your answer is fully simplified don't go here and do this, okay? That's not good, especially on tester quizzes for two reasons. One, it's gonna cost you extra time. And two, I have seen so many, uh, you know, I've been teaching math for decades, thousands of problems where students will have the right answer here, okay, as an improper fraction, then they go uh, change that into uh, a mixed number fraction, and then they make a mistake here, and then they turn that in, and then when I say they have it wrong, they usually have a look like this, you know, they're just so upset, I'm like, hey, you gotta listen, okay, uh, you know, don't volunteer to take that stuff unless you are told to do so. Now, of course, you need to know how to do that, and sometimes you'll need to be able to, um, uh, write your final answers as mixed number fractions, but just don't um, uh, volunteer to do so. Make sure, however, that you fully simplify, reduce all your fractions. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. Again, you know, the whole point to my videos is to, you know, give you some, uh, 
you know, for lack of a better word, try to inspire you to improve and learn mathematics. I don't care if you fail math or you hate math, if you don't think you're good at math, those are all, uh, you know, really, that's not the truth, okay? Everyone out there watching this video can be highly successful in mathematics, but you have to commit yourself to it, all right? It's like anything else, it takes time, it takes commitment, and you know, you're just gonna have to have laser beam focus on learning one skill at a time. Just don't try to learn all of math all at once because you're just gonna get frustrated. So if I can help you out with that, that is the whole point behind my videos. And if this video again helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.